Right. I mean, ultimately, I don't. Every year, I don't think that the Remembrance Week should be taken any more differently than it was the year before, or the year after, because you know, I think the reason why we hold it is to remember those that were lost but never forgotten. And but I do think that this year, since it's hitting such a big milestone, you know, 25 years later. Um, it, it was a big deal to the university and to us as a, as a 35 scholars to put on the week because we really wanted to hold a big event. I mean, my family, um, Stephen Russell Burrell's family that's from North Dakota usually doesn't come every year, but they're bringing their entire family this year to attend the um, events on Friday. And that was something that was really, really meaningful to me and to see you know, all the community come back together, the victims' families, friends, and people who may not even know the victims. I think that something was very important to us and that's what we held at our core as we were planning the events. And I think it has impacted me a lot. I mean, just last night at the Candlelight Vigil, there was a pretty great showing of um, people from the community and SU as well. And there was just a lot of media there to hear the story and to share it, which I thought was very, very important and very impactful. The other emotional aspect of that is, you know, I am representing Sandy Phillips and I've never met him. Um, all I know are tales of him that I've heard from his friends, his family, people who have you know, left behind pieces of him around this organization. So um, something that's been very interesting to me is how um, my time with SA has progressed and how I've kind of learned about who he is as a person. And there was a painting on my wall and one day I was removing some other pictures that were left behind from former administrations and I noticed this painting had um, a peeling layer of paper on the back so I pulled it off to see what that was and there was actually paper that was attached to the back of it um, from a former president kind of giving a biography of him and also it listed excerpts from his poetry so it made me very emotional to actually read through some of his own thoughts and feelings and to see that we're very connected and um, you know, he's somebody that I'm sure would have been a good friend of mine had we been around at the same time. So it's exciting to me and it's an honor to me to be able to represent him and his hopes and dreams and see that we have many of the same goals and aspirations. So knowing that it's the 25th anniversary really inspired us to kind of go out there and make Remembrance Week as big as possible. So we've tweeted, we've Facebooked, we've done all the social media to get people's attention, posted the calendars everywhere. Our biggest goal this year is encouraging people to not just be active in the community this week in light of remembrance, but to take it with them into the future. So that's kind of our community service event this evening. That's kind of the whole point of it, is to show them that you can come out and get involved for you know, an hour of your time and do something for the community to, to move it forward. So our whole, our whole idea is this is how we act forward. What can we do as a community to act forward? Uh, specifically for the 25th anniversary this year, we've launched a new project. It's called Telling the Stories, the Pan Am Flight 103 Story Archives Project. What we're doing is collecting oral histories from anyone who has personal experience with Pan Am 103. This can be family and friends of victims, faculty and staff on campus, students who were here at the time or maybe knew the victims, and all the way to police investigators who worked on the case in Lockerbie in Scotland, uh, lawyers, people who worked on the trial, uh, there was a criminal trial, international, um, anybody really who has personal experience with the tragedy. So we're collecting those oral histories. We also launched a virtual timeline of events on our website. That's about 150 events that relate to Pan Am 103. It'll take you all the way from December 1988 until April of 2013, and that's again available on the website. And in conjunction with that, we have an exhibition installed on the sixth floor of Bird Library that pulled out some of the more salient events from that timeline and gave them a physical presence here that people could take a look at. This is actually a newer documentary, so we've watched As It Happens um, in the past, and that was very telling. And it was also starting to, you know, get a bit old. So you see it every single year, and it's great. It's something that everyone should be able to access and actually see. But it's nice that we have something new coming in this year. Um, and it's just a good time to kind of commemorate the 25th anniversary and show that we're moving forward as a society as well. Um, one that I helped plan was to have each of the student organizations that were affiliated with the victims um, create some sort of tangible artifact that represents their organization as well as the victim. And we're going to have some sort of dedication of those artifacts to um, the archives that are in Bird Library and the sixth floor.